morning everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. You'll have to forgive me, I just got in. I'm a little late. I had to uh, check our trap line. Um, the mountain man has something really cool going on today, which I will share with you next week. Um, really awesome stuff. So I am doing a little double duty today, which is just fine. I'm going to ask you guys to bear with me this morning. I have got one major, major headache, but I wanted to get on with you guys, so just bear with me. Um, good morning, Angela. Good morning, Miss Tammy. I hope you guys had as enjoyable of a Thanksgiving as we did. I have to say, this was probably the best Thanksgiving ever. <laughs> Sound like my son. Um... It was just really awesome. It tasted better than ever, and um, I went the day before to get the Mountain Boy, as you guys saw on my last week's video um, from the car. Good morning, Miss Diana. I'll tell you what, those winds last week were crazy. Um, I got out of the truck at the end, or the car at the end of our ride, pretty close to the end of our ride, and uh, I had to fuel up, and it was so windy that when I, I rattled off the nozzle in the car so it wouldn't blow. I mean, the wind was blowing and whipping in every direction. I actually did a video. I may try to put it on here a little later. I was getting blown away. I almost lost my coat when I got out of the car. That's how windy it was. Well, when I pulled the nozzle out, I got covered in fuel. So I was praising God that when I did the retraining of the brain, it eliminated my struggles with bad odors. And getting sick or I would have been sick for the duration of the ride but we had a great road trip we had a great road trip we had a really awesome visit he was here from well, I picked him up Wednesday we got in about 10 30 at night and then he was here till Sunday and then Mountain Ben took him back so that was a blessing also thank you Miss Diana I appreciate the prayers man I just have a headache right in here I don't know if I laid wrong last night or what but and then on the four-wheeler checking the traps the fuel because I have such a headache it was making me sick so it'll all be good I am drinking chaga with our honey and uh, I have some uh, cat's claw in there hoping that'll help kick that away so tell me about your Thanksgiving what was the best part of your Thanksgiving Mine was my guys for sure. Food was second. Um, I'm sure they would reverse that maybe, but <laughs> I'm, I'm always thankful for my men. I just feel so very blessed by my family. And uh, just the time spent. Something else I did during that time is I fasted. I didn't fast from food. I fasted from every single one of my electronics. Good morning, Miss Shelley. And that was just wonderful absolutely wonderful um the mountain man was going out in the trap line he was using his camera to record so i wasn't using my phone i had my phone set somewhere and wasn't even paying attention to it and it was just absolutely wonderful best part was having the family together yeah always i just think that's just i just i love my family i'm looking forward to christmas this year i just talked to um, Austin's school and he'll be coming back on the 19th for Christmas and I think he goes back on the 7th or the 8th so it's a, a long time which will be really really nice. My fingers are worse than before because I have been doing all kinds of stuff in water and things so I'll try to do this. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Diana says we went to our newly married daughter's house, her first family Thanksgiving at their place. All the food was wonderful and we had a great time playing Taboo. Oh, awesome. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Yes. So glad you guys are joining me and I'm going to try to pull through this. I just, it's just in my, when it's in my head, I can't function, but I wanted to get on with you guys. Um, there were some things said last week that I wanted to retouch on and I wanted to go over, um, the things that I had wanted to share with you last week. Um, being on the road, it was pretty hustle bustle. Um, with that car last week, this was another funny. I'm going down the road and I'm trying to figure out why my mirrors, my, my mirrors on the sides of the car are blinking. 
Isn't that a nice feature that they have to let you know that there's somebody in your blind spot? Nice feature, but I had no idea what it was doing at first. That was just such a funny experience. But today I wanted to talk about making your own things, making what you need. And I know many of you do that. Um, one of, what um, inspired this today is I'm sitting here looking at my box of candle making supplies. I used to make candles and soaps. Um, we sold them on our website. I'm going to do that again. I used to use certain scents. The scents didn't bother me before. I used to love certain smells, so that's what I went after. Um, I'm, you know, I'm realizing over the years how toxic so many things are. Just as an example, you know, um, people make fun of me and don't understand why I don't use any chemicals in my home. But the mountain boy was cleaning at school and stuff got underneath his watch band and he has a nasty, nasty chemical burn on his arm. You know, the chemicals not only are, are to our skin, but when we smell them, they impair us greatly, but we don't realize it until you have removed them from your home. Um, the smell of Clorox used to put me flat on my back. Oh my gosh. And um, the smell of my own candles that I made after I got sick, I was unable to, to utilize. So I've decided, um, I've always used soy wax. I'm going to make unscented candles and I'm going to make um, essential oil scented candles. Um, I'm not sure yet what scents I'm going to do. It's going to be minimal. Um, I love just burning a candle and I want to be able to have that glow, that warmth, that light without all the odors. So I have decided to start doing that again. I will be doing uh, soaps again too in the very, very near future. Um, also started working on some of the recipe cards that I used to sell and we'll have those back up on our website. We try to have functional things on our website that we sell, but these are also things that I utilize in my home all the time. Candles are a big thing. I use a lot of tea lights because they're less expensive and um, they burn for the night. So I can start them, you know, now with daylight savings, you know, when it gets dark and they'll burn till after we go to bed. So it's a good burn time and um, just gives me that nice glow in the house here. So that's one thing I do. Another thing I'm going to do is when I was cleaning out the Mountain Boy's room yesterday, um, the Mountain Boy's room was still kind of the catch-all. It was my room where I had a ton of things in there that I wanted to still sell and other things that needed to get transitioned out into the shed and packed up. So when I was in there, I found like six pairs of jeans and I have four or five pairs upstairs. And what I want to do with those is make a quilt. I love weighted blankets. Um, you know, they have them out there on the market for autism and Asperger's. They are very comforting and um, I really like them for that reason. It just feels good when you're in bed and you have something really heavy on you. You kind of, I think you sleep better. But I wanted to make a denim um, quilt. So that is what I'm going to start working on later today. Probably this evening I'll start cutting my squares out. That'll make it easier to store them rather than having these jeans sitting all over the place. I've also made um, hot pads out of denim jeans. Uh, I used the pocket on the one so that I could put my hand in it and then grab onto my pots or my cast iron. So that's one of the things. But I know you ladies and, and men do a lot of other things. I know many of you make your own toilet paper. Uh, we we are prepared to do that if we have to. It's one that we have chose not to um, at this point, but we are prepared if we need to. Uh, we make all kinds of things here that we need uh, and and improvise a lot. Make our making our own things, repairing our own things. So, what are some of the things in your homes that you guys make? Uh, let's see here. Good morning, Ken. Shelly says, I cannot walk down the lawn, oh, laundry soap and candle aisles without getting a headache. Yeah, I couldn't, I'd be sick. Oh my goodness. That was awful. I still, I still stay out of those aisles. I didn't, never appreciated them before, but when I got sick, it was bad. And now I just, I, yeah, they're nasty. It's very, very strong. Um, Diana says, I can't do any... We're near the fertilizer aisle at the Home Depot. The smell is overwhelming. It is a weird smell, and it's almost like a drying smell. Like it, um, 
feel like it's evaporating uh, my nasal passages or whatever. It like catches my breath. It's weird. I totally, yes, yes. Angela says, I spent Thanksgiving at my son's house. He and his wife just had a baby. All three adult kids and spouses came, a couple from church, and my parents came too. Oh, how nice. Oh, how nice. And congratulations on the new grandbaby. Uh, Tammy says, I make our laundry soap, hand soap, sometimes shampoo. I struggle with the shampoo. I have not found the right mixture yet. With my long hair, um, either they make it really greasy or they make it, it, it sticks in my hair. I haven't found what I, I haven't found anything I completely like yet. I do do the laundry soap and the hand soap too. Um, I used to make baby wipes for my kids when, when they were little. Um, just with a roll of uh, paper towels. But we do all kinds of different things. Um, I, the laundry soap I really enjoy doing. Um, and I make bath soaps and, and uh, salts mainly for my soaking. Mainly detox salts. But I do a lot with the herbs too. I, um, yesterday I made Essiac tea. And I made chaga and... Uh, I added the uh, cat's claw to that yesterday because my body's often very sore to the touch. It's my muscles and my tissue, so I was trying that to see, but I was grateful for it this morning. Um, that is my problem with shampoo making. Yes, yeah, weird. I can't. I can't quite get a good combination. Um, either it gets real chalky or it gets really greasy, and the ends aren't greasy, but it's always greasy up top. So I've kind of detoured on that one because I couldn't find anything that I, I really, really liked. I mean, if I'd be in a pinch, I could use a whole bunch of different things I have in the house and blend something. Um, I use a lot of Dr. Bonner's stuff. I love his soaps. Uh, let's see here. I have a bunch of jeans stocked up to make a blanket. Need to cut the squares. I need to make soap. I just ran out. I heard someone mention Garbanzo Flower Shampoo Alternative. Interesting. I love garbanzo beans. I have those in very plentifully in my in my food cache. So that would be something I could do. I'll have to research that. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, there's all kinds of different things available to use um, and to make for ourselves. And the thing that I focus on is having that stuff um, on hand. The mountain man needed to uh, soak some snares the other night and he's like, do you have baking soda? I'm like, do I have baking soda? I have 25 pounds of baking soda. Baking soda is one of those things you can use for all kinds of stuff. Cleaning things, um, you know, soaking traps. I mean, soaking in it. I use baking soda for a lot of different things. There is so much I wanna make but haven't done a lot yet. I do make our hand soaps using Dr. Bonner's. Yeah, I really like Dr. Bonner's. He is their, their soaps are one of the better qualities and they have really good scents to them. Um, I do use um, Mrs. Meyer, some of her things, um, but I prefer to make my own. And the thing is when, this is kind of funny, I'm pulling double duty. I, I need to go get firewood in a little bit, just out of the woodshed. And I need to work on our water pump. Um, my water pump is powered. We use an RV pump in our home. There's a reason I'm sharing this. Um, and it, it is connected to a solar panel out the back and is charged by a 12 volt battery. I know it's get, getting juice, but it wasn't giving me any water. And now I'm getting a little bit of water after it went through some kind of really weird loud noise. So I'm thinking that my filter is clogged. So when I'm done here, I'm going to go down and take um, uh, disconnect the um, pump and take the filter off and clean it and see. The reason I'm saying that is in addition to making our own things, having the things we need like breakers, like for, for example, uh, we only went three days without power from the sun all 10 years we've been here. And that was because a breaker went. We had to order it in. We always have three of everything, um, you know, backups so that we have things on hand. And that just happened to be one thing that we hadn't thought about. Um, we do now. But thinking about those things too are the things that you need to have on hand in the event that something fails. 
and having an extra filter on hand for our water pump would be good. Um, it is cleanable, but it would be also good to have one on hand. Um, having the materials and the things you need on hand to make the things you need. I have lots of wool yarn so I can make us socks and hats. Um, I have fabric on hand that if we needed to make underwear, we can make underwear. I have elastic. Um, so I know that sounds funny, uh, especially when we're living in a world that there, everything is so plentiful. But in the event that things were to fall apart or things were to change, um, having everything you need on hand is extremely important in those situations. And you gotta really think out of the box, you know, what those things might be because you don't think of things failing like my water pump. Um, I have a full cistern downstairs, but I am not getting the water into the house. So, or I am in spurts. So I need, I need to go look at that and I need to take care of that. Um, also, you know, we've talked about stocking up on food and I, we've touched on water. Water is a very important thing that we should have lots of excess, um, especially if you're renting or your, your pump is uh, electrical powered. You know, that goes out and, and you don't have snow on the ground. Snow you can easily turn into water. However, it takes a lot of snow to get an abundant amount of water. Um, not that it's not usable and not that it can't be done, but having excess of things is really, really important. I think I said, yep, Diana, sh oh, there's a couple here. Let me go back. Uh, Diana says, I've used baking soda and water for shampoo and ACV and water for a rinse. I still use the ACV mixture. You know what? Now that you say that, that has been the absolute best combination ever to wash hair versus trying to make an actual soap. The only thing I didn't like about that is on in the summertime, um, when you sweat, you tend to smell like vinegar. At least I did. Maybe I used too much, but that is the best combination yet to get clean hair and your hair feels great. Um, two is one and one is none. I thought I saw you share that. That is our rule. That is our rule here. You got to have backups. You've just got to have backups of things and not take for granted that things won't fail. Um, a good, a good thing to think about Power goes out, you've got food, but you stocked up on a lot of canned goods. The only can opener you have is an electric can opener. Those are just the simple things most people forget. Having a hand crank can opener, um, you know, having things like, that's why I always say to you guys, we have everything in place here to keep us going if something were to happen. You know, I have an electric grain mill but I also have a hand crank one. That hand crank one can be hooked up to a bicycle. Um, we've talked about it before. That was a joke when we were coming out here that my exercise bike will be utilized to uh, make power. So, um, you know, thinking outside of the box is really important. And it doesn't, it isn't just our food. It isn't just our water. It's all of our necessities, all of our needs, all the things that we need on a regular basis to keep going to keep to keep uh functioning in our day to day good afternoon mill glad to have you joining us uh let me see here okay angela says i use dr bonner's thinned way down in foaming hand soap dispensers thank you only use about oh only use about three tablespoons for the whole bottle awesome yeah that's what makes it so nice is we can conserve so greatly versus Buying, you know, when you go out and you buy, if you buy the good stuff, you're spending anywhere from six to ten dollars for a hand dispenser for soap. And when you can make it for pennies on the dollar, I, you know, making my laundry soap, oh my goodness, I've, I've had those supplies downstairs for so long. It doesn't require a lot, it doesn't use a lot for the washing machine. Um, adding essential oils can really spice things up, both our hand soaps and our, our laundry soaps. Um, Angela says, I use ACV rinse for the hair. I put rosemary essential oil in it. I'll have to try that. I really do like that though. That was my um, go-to for quite a few uh, summers anyway, while we were here. 
Um, I really, I really enjoyed that. But I have tried soaps. I love, I love experimenting. I love making things. Um, I made a witch hazel and rose um, extract from my rose petals on my wild rose bushes out here uh, for a facial cleanse. Um, I make lip balms, I make salves, I make hand creams and lotions. You know, being in and, and fa different facial things, um, I love being able to do that. I love that wholesome smell of natural things too. And being able to forage them here makes it even nicer, like the roses. And I do a lot with, I get my rose hips and my elderberries. We've talked about that before, but I love, I love the natural scents. So that's why I'm going back to making my soaps and candles. I'm just going all natural. I mean, that's how I live now anyway. Um, when I started making my soaps and my candles, that was 10 years ago, right after we moved into the house. Um, that was the first thing I started attacking because I burned so many candles and we were uh, living by lantern light for quite a few months. So it was just nice to have the candles. Um, Tammy says, I put essential oils on a rag in the dryer when I use it. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And, you know, you can make those dryer balls really easy too. I have a dryer. It still has the film on the front window. It just came out of the box. It's a gas dryer. We've just never hooked it up because I always use. I was always hanging stuff by the wood stove or using my drying rack, so I didn't. I didn't need it. I don't know. I just like the traditional ways so much. I know, you know, it's more work. It takes more time sometimes, but it's just wholesome to me. I don't. I don't even know how to explain it. And it's really weird that trip to get Austin really really made me appreciate my home like I don't know how to explain it I've just been so out of the modern world and being a constant part of it that it just it just isn't pretty to me anymore um I just don't even know how to put it into words all I know is I was very thankful to come home and very thankful to be here um and what was funny is um, the mountain man has made mention of such things too. I'll share more on that too. But, um, being able to do our own thing, live in a wholesome way, create our own environments, makes life so very, very rewarding, very wholesome, very comforting. And there's such a freedom to it. And I really, I know that that is why I love our lifestyle so, so much. And I wanted to encourage you guys to think about the different things that you use on a daily basis that if you couldn't get to the store to go get it, would you have the things at your home to make it? And that's something to think about because it's really important to remember that because you'll, you'll remember it when you're in a pinch or when you're without. Angela says, I used to make laundry soap, but ruined a front loader because it was so gloppy. Our clothes started to smell bad. There are some definite concerns there. You definitely have to be very careful. Um, the first one I made was kind of gloppy too, and I switched it up and started using Dr. Bonner's instead of, I forget what I replaced. But you do you do need to be careful you, because if there's um, oils in it, that those oils can easily um, glob up your washing machines. Especially like I don't use hot water or warm water. I only have cold water running to my washer. And um, if I were to use something with high oils, uh, that would those lines would be gummed up instantly because as you know oils coagulate with cold so it is important to be careful what you're using good afternoon or morning chad hello 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 <laughs> um there we go let me see here a couple of you have said things and i'm trying to open them let me see okay miss tammy says i prefer the line but in the winter i have far too many clothes to hang them inside and when it is well below zero and feet of snow, I'm not going out on the line. <laughs> I don't blame you. Plus, to hang ours out here on my wash line outside, I end up bringing in stiff clothing. You know, they're not dry, they're just frozen. So, <laughs> exactly. 
Now what's nice is I can string a line up in my loft. The heat rises and things dry. Things dry so fast in here. I mean, it's crazy. I think it dries faster than the modern dryers because when Austin was in the apartment, we were using the dryer there for his clothes. Goodness, it took forever for stuff to go through the dryer that it was dry where I hang it in here and like half hour my clothes are dry. It's just so, it's that good wood heat, good drying wood heat. Uh, let's see here. Shelly says, yesterday when my mom was here, we went through some stuff under the bathroom sink and I threw out all of my makeup that I have not used in years. I use goat milk soap for my hair and my body. I took a month or two for my body to get used to the change. Yeah, um, I use, I was using goat's milk soaps all the time. And I do use those soaps in my hair, but they still left a film. Um, I think with long, well, you have long hair too. Maybe I'll have to find out what brand you're using. Um, but I do love the goat's milk soaps. They are so um, moisturizing. Um, that was something that I was making when we had our goats. Uh, but one thing I found is in the shower, it left a, a nasty film. And I found a liquid soap, and I'm trying to think of the name of it right now. It's, it's made in Africa, and it is, uh, oh, I can't think what it's called. I'll have to remember to share with you guys next week. Um, it's really nice, and you only need very little to get really good lather, and it lasts me forever. Uh, so I did, I was being cautious with that because of the film, and also when you use it in the sinks, the handmade soaps with all of the uh, oils tend to gum things up sometimes too. So you do need to be careful with that. Um, that can make a very big difference on your plumbing. And you got to remember, a lot of times back in the day when they were using the handmade soaps, they didn't have plumbing. They were using uh, tubs and, and different things. So um, keep that in mind with your plumbing. And yes, um, makeup is really, really toxic. Um, there is so much junk and chemicals and metals and garbage in makeup. I always have worn very little anyway, but I do all natural stuff now, some of which I make myself, some of which I have found other resources for. But, um, and lipsticks, lipsticks, I, I have to wear lipstick versus a chapstick because my lips get so dry and um, lipsticks that I utilize really hold the moisture in. Um, but you get your Maybelline and different uh, lipsticks over the counter, you know, on the shelves versus the natural made things and you're dealing with lots of toxicity. So it's really, you know, it's important to know that and if you want to, you know, make your own, um, finding out um, good sources for your products as well as um, good sources for the recipes. Um, I always turn to uh, the Herbal Academy. Their, their recipes are fabulous, and I will share a link with you later in the comments below um, for their recent course that's going on right now, which I would highly recommend getting involved in. But you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash H-E, and um, you will find all their courses on sale right now. So check them out. But um, being able to make your own things is priceless, priceless. Um, we have used our homemade goat milk soap exclusively for about four years now. Can't believe we ran out. <laughs> uh, yes, that happens. That happens. Oh, good morning, Miss Rachel. Diana says, all my tincture supplies and candle making supplies are still in storage. I'm so looking forward to getting back to tinctures and starting with candle making. Yeah, both are two of my passions. I absolutely love that. I have run the dryer at least two cycles to get things to dry much quicker outside. I know. I know. That drives me batty. It just takes, I mean, they say, you know, that, you know, using modern day conveniences make things so much faster, but I question that sometimes. Um, Angela says, want to make a salve for everyone for Christmas. Nice. I've done that before and candles. Um, Miss Rachel says, you're an empty nester. It just occurred to me. Sorry, way off topic. Yes, I am an empty nester, and it is very different and very fun. Yes, and today I am a solo nester. Uh, the mountain man is busy doing some things, so I am by myself, and you know what? 
having that peace and quiet and just alone time is really good, which I want to mention too, which will be part of our next conversation. Um, it's important to recharge our batteries and that can be done in varying ways. So thank you, Rachel, because you took me on a good bunny trail. Um, you know, recharging our batteries can be done by being by ourselves. It can be being in a car and jamming with the radio way too loud like I did last week and was busted. Um, it could be, you know, being home and making candles, making salves, doing the things we enjoy doing. Um, and sometimes, you know, recharging our battery doesn't necessarily mean that we need to be by ourselves either. But there is something to be said about taking time away by ourselves, for ourselves, to do things we enjoy. And um, I think most of you will agree with me that the things you do for your families, whether it's cooking um, or whether it's making um, the salves, the tinctures, the laundry soap, it's something we all enjoy doing. It's something that's part of our makeup, part of our lifestyle, part of what puts us back to our traditional roots and ways and just gives us a good feeling. And I think there's so much to be taken away from a traditional lifestyle. You know, they were always happy. They might have had a lot to do and things might have been rough, but they were always happy. At least they appeared happy. And the stories I've heard are of people being happy. So I don't know. There's a lot to be said. Miss Tammy says, we have bar soap I made and was using for making liquid hand soap. It gummed up our lines so I had to quit using it yeah you know really the the older soaps or the homemade soaps traditional soaps have a lot of oil it is a huge huge oil content in them and like I said when when they were initially being used they weren't being used in plumbing they were used in in tubs and the old washing machines you know it was very different very different times and you get that into our you know, modern day plumbing and, you know, even, um, oh, I just went blank. Like I said, bear with me because my head, my head is not letting up here, but, um, oh, geez, it's not swishing, but coconut, you know, you do the coconut oil, um, in your mouth to detoxify and, and such. Um, I'm totally drawing a blank and I know it's something simple but anyway when you do that that as well can if you were spitting in your sinks that as well can gum up your your sink so these modern these these traditional things that are coming back that are are really good for us can be really bad for our plumbing so keep that in mind um thank you I knew somebody would share and I knew it was something simple when you're doing the oil pooling, my best recommendation is to spit it outside or spit it in something that you can dump outside versus doing that in your sinks. And and the same with the soaps. The soaps are tough. That's why I do like Dr. Bonner so much because that soap does not gum up your sinks. It's when you add oils to things that start gumming things up. Unless you're using excessively hot water and you're following your washings or whatever it is you're doing with excessively hot water to push the um, oils through your, through your system. Um, Angela says Mountain Rose Herbs has a wonderful blog and lots of recipes and tutorials. Yes, they are my go-to for my herbs also. Um, Mountain Rose Herbs, um, if I'm not mistaken, is out of Utah, and they are, they are fabulous. Yes, yeah, so Mountain Rose Herbs and the Herbal Academy are uh, also uh, affiliated and uh, feed off of each other as far as recommendations, too. And the Herbal Academy does have a blog where you can find recipes as well, not just their classes. So um, keep that in mind. There are some on our website as well, and um, I will be sharing more moving forward. Uh, things this year has just been so crazy, so, so crazy. And, you know, everything in life, nothing is guaranteed. And I am a true believer after the last three years that our perspective is our biggest guide 
next to the Holy Spirit when it comes to living life. Um, we, we have the choices so much more than people realize to um, make or break situations. Um, oh, it's Oregon. Thank you. Uh, Utah or Oregon. Um, Utah must be the one that I get my uh, tinctures from, the certain tinctures for my healing. Um, but Angela shared Mountain Rose Herbs is from uh, Eugene, Oregon. Nice that it's close. Do they have a store or an outlet there? I've just only ever ordered online. Um, like I said earlier, for those of you that jumped on, I have a really bad headache, so my thoughts are starting to leave me. Um, it's just, it's right, it's on my forehead and it's just throbbing. So, um, I, I, the good possibility there could be also that I was pushing some heavy toxins um, with the uh, food that I've been eating. So, that could be part of it as well. But, um, you know, we've been talking about marriage and... Part of, I really want to continue on that. The links are down below that I have been sharing. And if you haven't watched the homework, there's three videos from Todd at the uh, SSL Family Dad on uh, YouTube. He is a, a homesteader also, but he was also a pastor previously. And he's been starting to share things. You can find him for Farmers for the number four Christ on YouTube also. And... Uh, his sermons are just dead on as far as what biblical marriage <laughs> what biblical marriage is and what it looks like and I really feel that it's worth watching there we go uh, watching his videos Angela said when you make handmade soap you don't have to super fat it so all of the oil will be su su yeah I can never say that saponified Mountain Rose has a store. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just a lot of the recipes ha I've found um, with the handmade soaps that a lot of the recipes leave quite a film and quite an, an oily base on things. So it's just important to be careful, but they are fabulous and they are good for the skin. And um, again, just when you're making things, make sure you're really cautious of the ingredients you're using because your things are only as good as the ingredients you use. So that is really important when it comes to making your own things. And if you guys have other things that you've been making or um, you know other comments, questions on the, on the lines of the first half of our um, conversation today, just leave them in the comments. We'll, we can keep jumping around. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to jump back to um, the marriage line of things because there's so many aspects to this. And I feel it's really important that, you know, people realize what biblical marriage is and what it looks like because I know so many people are offended by the word submit. And that goes both men and women. Um, men, some men aren't prepared to have a help meet. Um, the, the comment that's brought up often is she can do it just as good as I can, or she can do it better than I can is the, that good old thing that came up over the years. And, and women don't like to be told what to do is what they feel that when they submit, that's what's, what's occurring when really, um, it's two people working together imperfect let me say imperfect people working together to to live a happy life and when you learn to respect each other compliment each other love each other and understand your roles um, you will actually desire to to submit to one another you know, it's like I just ask you. I ask you how you felt about making things for your family and that it's part of the joy you get in being a, a, a mother or a father. Because I know men make some of these things too. Um, so, you know, there's joy in doing things for each other and, and for our families. And there's great joy to be found when you are walking out 
what biblical marriage is supposed to be. There is great love, and don't get me wrong, like I told you before, there's tussles, there's, there's arguments, but when you remember what you're fighting for, that you're, 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 you're fighting for longevity, you're fighting for a marriage that's going to last, and you're gonna have, you know, we get tired, we get, we, we get hurt, um, but marriage is something that we need to work on. It's constant. It is a constant, constant effort to continually improve um, our, our day to day, our marriage, our love for one another. And you know, when we put constant effort into it, it's something that doesn't grow stale. You know, when we, when we start stepping back and having expectations, desires that aren't being met, um, and, and aren't walking things out biblically, um, I think that that's when things grow stale. And, and it's important that we continue to work at it. We work at everything else, right? We work at improving our soaps, we work at improving our tinctures and our knitting and our sewing and everything else that we do, mechanics, whatever, you know, we, we, we try to improve ourselves all the time. And that is why marriage should be viewed no differently. Angela says, I've been reading a book of prayers for couples by uh, Stormy Armadian. Been sharing the pages on my Instagram. Awesome. She's got a lot of knowledge. And what she shares is um, having walked out a very rough marriage that lasted and that, that um, made it through the rough patches. And uh, she's got very great books. Um, another one is... Um, Praying for our husbands. I know it's in the links below. Um, my brain is not cooperating. Um, but the links below, there are a lot of great resources. I listed all of mine that I found just to be such wonderful aids and such wonderful truths. And then some of you shared and I included those as well. Um, but praying for our spouses is important. You know, we both have roles that are stressful, consuming, tiring. You know, um, when you're a couple by yourselves and you're just dating, it's really easy. But once you add a family to the mixture, there's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of separation there in that, you know, um, oftentimes a woman's job may keep her more in the house where the man's job will keep him outside. I struggled with that for a long time because I'm such an outdoor girl. Um, not that I was resentful or anything, just that I really wanted to be outside and kept trying to figure out how to do both. And there are ways. <laughs> but, you know, there are seasons in our lives, too. And that's something else that we need to remember, that not everything is forever. There are seasons of our lives. As our children are young, we go through different aspects of life. As our children are elementary school, we go through different aspects of life and, and things. And then as the teenage years hit, and now as the college years hit, you know, and as we go through all of those, that does play a role in our marriage too. Trying to shuffle it all and learning how to shuffle it can be very difficult too. And that's why it's so important that we have good communication with our spouses. You know, if that if something isn't right, that we're willing to share that, that we're willing to let the other know we're feeling a little neglected. Um, and, and what can be done so that that is different. You know, when you've got a newborn baby in the house, um, it's gonna be a pretty easy thing for the man to feel neglected pretty fast because the woman is now thrown into something very new. Um, she's oftentimes breastfeeding every two hours or feeding every two hours. Uh, there's lots of diapers to change and we're still trying to keep up with our regular daily chores. So. Learning how to shuffle life can be one of the greatest conflicts in marriage because there's a lot that needs to get done and sharing the responsibilities and communicating can be uh, some of the greatest gifts you'll give each other and praying for each other. You know, um, God knows better than anybody what we are dealing with internally. A lot of times we deal with our, our biggest struggles internally, uh, not just men, but women too. 
that we don't uh, open up and share and it's important to have communication because it's really easy without communication to have miscommunication or misunderstandings and it's very easy to hit roads of anger, bitterness, resentment, um, all those wonderful negative words that the enemy likes to provoke and, and to put in place. The other thing, and I've shared this with you guys many times, um, not having um, expectations of each other. The world paints such incredible pictures of men and women, married couples, and you know we, we form our expectations oftentimes on media and on movies and, and things. And as we always tell the mountain boy, that was in a movie. You know, it's not always realistic. It's not always um, easy to utilize those things as our, um, our, our guides. Um, actually, I highly recommend that you don't. Um, because what is painted in the media and in the movies today is not realistic. It's not real life. And it's, it's hard to compete with, you know, having expectations of one another causes disappointment because you are expecting somebody to know what you want without telling them. You're expecting somebody to know what you need without telling them. You're expecting somebody to do something without sharing with them that that needs to be done. Expectations can be a real, when you remove expectations out of your marriage, it can, it can um, be a real game changer. Uh, I learned that when the mountain man and I were dating uh, to eliminate expectation. And I have not ever brought that back. Expectation is not really, I don't think, a thing of God. I think it's a thing of the enemy. Um, you know, God expects us to do things. Um, but expectations of others can be jaded. So those are my thoughts on that. Um, and Angela brought something up last week. And I hope your Thanksgiving was wonderful, Angela. You were in my prayers heavily. Um, she had mentioned that some of the things that she was experiencing... Uh, of feeling unappreciated was being received by her son also. And it, uh, correct me, Angela, the way I interpreted that was that he was also learning maybe something that was a poor quality trait that might be being passed down. And one way I feel to keep our children from carrying on... Um, family histories, negative family histories, is to keep them involved in this, to keep them involved in watching these three videos that are homework so that they understand what it's, what it's really supposed to be like. The other thing is we lead by example in everything we do, whether it's making soaps or candles or whether it's loving on our spouse. And, um, you know, life is is a box of chocolates. It is a box of chocolates because you don't know what you're going to get. And every day is different. And some days will be really good. Other days you may be in turmoil. You know, that's also what happens living in a fallen world. But the thing is, what our children can learn best from is sometimes from our mistakes. When we have a tiff or we, we have a struggle, we can lead by example, even, you know, you know, God brings good from the ashes. And the same is true in, in our situations where we may have a tussle, we may have an argument. And I, I'm going to say this from my experience, you know, we'd have an argument and, and that. And learning to say those two special words, I'm sorry, and also... Um, Bouncing back from that argument and being able to um, sit and have a conversation and work through it instead of it being this all-out yelling battle. Um, 
we can lead by examples through our battles too and through our confrontations and our struggles and our mishaps. You know, it's no different than, you know, making a batch of soap and it failing. You know, you've got to learn from that and move on from that. The same is true with things in our marriage. And our kids are watching. They're watching our every move, our every word, and, and our reactions to things. And the more we involve them in this and the more we keep them spiritually intact and understanding God's will for marriage and their lives, uh, I think that the more of a justice we can do for our society, uh, this throwaway attitude is is just it's it's hard to watch, and it's also hard to watch, you know, people not understanding uh, how they are walking so opposite of what God's will is for us. So. Because I'm bringing that up, it just resonated with me. It's it's sunk in with me as to something that I needed to say and share is that, you know, our kids do not need to be a result of our past. We can clearly make changes, positive changes, through our perspective, through our new habits we form, to change history. You know, I was talking about that last week, and I think I talked about it in one of the trapping videos that I did, but um, we have so much ability to make things change and to change things in a positive fashion. We just have to be willing to want to do it. Um, it's going to take work. Uh, you know, everything that we do takes work. Everything that we do requires um, effort. And like I said, perspective is a huge thing. And if we feel that the perspective, our perspective is that, you know, that's how it was for me growing up. That's how it was for my family. That's how it just has to be. But that's not true. That's not true at all. If I was walking that out right now, I would be one very miserable, bitter, angry, ugly person. And I don't want to be that. And I don't want my kids to be that. And I don't want my kids' kids to be that. So we need to change things. And we need to, if you are rolling from a history of these kind of things, remember that we can, uh, we, we can make a difference, both for our children and ourselves. Okay, let me see here. Craig and I, Diana says, Craig and I just watched... A two-part video series from Focus on the Family interviewing a couple, Milan and Kay Yurkovich. Really good info on how to work through conflicts. Awesome. I will check it out and, and provide the links. Um, Angela says, yes, he is a wonderful man of God and loves his wife very much, but in actions he falls into the habits he saw happening growing up, like having a small baby in the home, his wife going back to work a couple days a week for financial reasons, and yet he prioritizes hunting and hanging out with his guy friends. And he also works from early morning to night, all things his dad did and does. So almost all of the baby responsibilities fall on her. And Angela also says, I've been finding Kirk Cameron's talks about marriage online. I don't want to pay for the course yet if I can find them online. Yeah, and his, that, the movie Fireproof is really, really good. So is War Room. Um, and yes, Kirk Cameron is really, really pushing uh, for families and marriage. Uh, I love his materials. And I saw he has that course. I've seen it pop up a couple times on Instagram. And yeah, you know, we've got to be willing, as you shared in, in that, that he was prioritizing basically himself. And, you know, when, when there's selfishness involved in relationships, um, it definitely is hard to work through. And when... We walk out biblical marriage where we are our help meets to one another and not leaving all the responsibility on one or the other. Um, <clears throat> it really, really helps 
make the home run smoothly. And the other thing is, no, Mrs. The other thing is involving our children. You know, our children today, a lot of them don't have chores or responsibilities. And I think that that's where we're lacking. I imagine many of you following me, your children have chores. Um, but there's a lot of kids that are in front of their machines or latchkey kids and they, they may not have a whole lot of responsibility. Having the responsibility, no, stop it. Stop, it's okay. Having responsibility early and sharing in the tasks also helps prepare them for that moving forward. And teaching our, our children to, you know, think outside of themselves, you know. We did that a lot with the mountain boy, you know, to pay attention to his surroundings, that when people were in need, that he wasn't just selfishly thinking of himself, that he was stepping out of himself to help others. So there's lots of ways we can uh, work with our children today to build strong marriages for the future. And like I said, sharing things like war room and fireproof and and um, you know the different uh, things that Focus in the Family has to offer. Focus on the Family has so much awesome stuff. Um, Wits End is there for the kids, Adventures in Odyssey, and they really uh, form a lot of core thoughts in our children. But there's so many resources out there for us all. And the thing is, everything in life takes effort. And um, God brings us two things and he helps us go through things. He gives us the strength and the courage we need to walk things out. I've shared many times with you that sometimes the things that we walk through aren't a result of us needing to learn something. It may be somebody close to us needing to learn something. Therefore, we need to walk it out with them. So the only thing we can do, we have two choices. We can wallow or we can shine and, and become warriors in it. And praying, I, like I said to you guys, I have seen the transformational power of prayer so many times. It is just incredibly amazing. So I encourage you guys to, um, you know, when you are struggling, to just dig in, dig in and trust God and pray and, and look for resources that are going to empower you through whatever it is you're going through and the struggle. The resources I've shared are books I've read, are books that I have pulled into. I've mentioned early in this that forgiveness and our baggage that we carry into marriage plays a big role in our progression through marriage. But one of the greatest gifts I think that our marriage here has um, flourished through is our ability to pray together, our ability to worship together even, um, and our ability to uh, focus on God, reading our Bibles, uh, being devoted to our Sundays, and uh, keeping that our day of rest, and spending time with God. And, and also, our greatest thing was seeing the transformation in each other through our prayers. So, you know, God, God has surely transformed our family through my illness and I am so thankful and grateful for that. It was good to begin with, but it transformed into a place, uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's really, really an amazing place. And a very, my home, my lifestyle, my family are my huge comforts. And that is what we should, that's what it should be like, is that our, our, our home should be our comfort place. And we have the abilities to continue striving to make it that way if it's not. Like I said, if you are in though a physical situation where you are being physically or verbally abused, um, you should seek help. Don't stay in a situation like that. We all have things we have to forgive. We all have things we have to get over. We all have things that we need to work on. None of us are perfect. 
and showing each other grace and mercy is uh, so, so powerful. Uh, Angela says, oh, she says too many chores, right? <laughs> and Angela says, thank you so much for praying. I believe it really has been helping. The power of prayer is incredibly intense. We need to see that and, and, and put our strength in that and trust in it. You know, there have been many times in my life where I've been praying and not seeing results and I've been in some really terrible places while this was going on and it was very consuming and very difficult, but I stayed in it and I, I, and I had to put my big girl panties on a lot and I had to worry her up and I had to, I had to really, really, really push myself to keep striving forward in these situations. And God did shine. His timing is always perfect. It doesn't mean that the walk we have to walk out is not easy. It's not, it's not pleasant. It's hard. It's just downright hard sometimes. But if we keep our trust in Him and we keep pushing forward as best we can, the results of prayer are so well worth it. And, and I can't express enough praying for our spouses. Um, you know, they don't need to know we're praying for them. I pray for, I, there were times I prayed for my, my husband and he, and my son, and they had no idea I was praying for them. Um, it's a gift we can give. And it's, and you know, sometimes we are called to gift um, without worrying about what one hand is doing from the other. And that means that we do it in secret and in private and, and, Gifting people with prayer is a very, very powerful gift. And I encourage that, um, you know, that we do that for our spouses. Our spouse, you know, my husband has a, a very large, heavy role. Men uh, deal with stress very differently than women do. And they take their responsibilities extremely passionately. Uh, their their job to provide, their job to uh, protect, their job to uh, be the uh, spiritual head of the family. You know, these jobs are um, very overwhelming and consuming to men because they take them so personally, and, and I'm so grateful. Uh, my husband is a great provider. He is a great head to the, and leader of our family. And he is a great protector. And we don't realize how strongly they take these roles and how much um, these roles weigh on their shoulders and on their hearts. And, um, you know, I, I saw that firsthand when I was sick because my mountain man could not protect me and he could not heal me. And it was very hard on him and his heart. So, you know, we need to understand that our men... Um, keep a lot of their struggles inside and don't share. So when you see your man acting out of sorts, uh, angry, uh, just unusual behaviors, it may just be that they are overwhelmed by their tasks, by their responsibilities, and oftentimes there's not much we can say that will change how they feel but we can pray for them. And I take that job very personally and, and I feel very blessed and honored to be able to do that for my husband and my son. You know, I pray a hedge of protection over my son every day. Um, we encountered some things um, when he was in school. You know, there were some things available um, that he could have got involved in and he had talked to us about it. And we shared our thoughts on it, and he took the high road. He he walked away, and um, we were very proud of him, very proud of what we've put in place in, in him and what, what God is doing in him. You know, we can't take all the credit. We give God the glory because what we taught him was uh, what we felt led to teach him. And what the Holy Spirit is doing in him right now is really powerful and it's really awesome to watch. So not just with our spouses, but our children, you know, we have so many abilities. So let's change history. You know, if you're walking out something that is a result of history of family generation after generation, 
pray it up, change it. We have the abilities to do that. We have the abilities to make a difference. We have the abilities to change our perspective from feeling resentful to being proud that we can do things. And um, some of the greatest gifts we can give people is the transformation in ourselves. You know, as they see God transforming us, um, they want some of that. And, and um, they see what you are using as your tools sometimes, and those tools are simple. It's the Bible, it's reading the Bible, it's praying, um, it's being determined to be bigger than the negative world around us and to see something positive and, and to look at things positively when everything is falling apart. You know, we have, we have great abilities. Good morning, Miss Goodrin. Guys, my head is throbbing. I wanted to read a couple things today, but um, I think I'm going to jump off of here because my headache is making me pretty nauseous. So I'm really glad you guys joined me. I hope that there was some goodness gained here um, in just what I shared today. And um, I, I really ask you guys to just continue praying for your spouses and praying for yourselves for wisdom and knowledge and growth. And direction, you know, um, there have been many times where I've asked God to guide me in the word and I will grab my Bible and ask him to share with me what I need to read for the day and I will just randomly open it and it has been pretty, pretty amazing what God shares with me. He will direct you, he will lead you and he will lift you when you need lifting. So I will, I will continue reading on with the things that I have here. Um, I'm really grateful you guys joined me. I'm going to say a prayer here and uh, let you guys jump off and enjoy the rest of your day. Papa, I just thank you for your love, your mercies, your grace, and all that you do in our lives. I thank you for bringing us all together that we can feed each other and build each other and help each other through good times and bad. I thank you for the community that you formed here and how they bless me, and I pray that uh, giving you all the glory that I am able to help them in some way as well. I just ask that you be with the mountain man today, help him to have some full traps, help me to get our water pump going, and uh, just be with everyone that's joining me and watching the replay, help them through their trials and their celebrations, Help them to seek you and find you. Help them to make gener generational changes and to uh, change history, to change their perspective and to find great peace and joy in that. And just be with everyone and uh, take care of their immediate needs. And thank you so much for what you're going to do. And I didn't mention it, but I will when I finish praying. But please be with Zach from American Homestead and his family. And be with Ginny and uh, Holly Delbert and their families as well. And uh, be with Mark while he's going through his uh, uh, cancer treatments. And be with Pat and heal him. And just uh, put your hand of healing on me today as well. Not sure what's going on, but uh, thank you for what you're going to do. And I ask that you just uh, take care of everyone while we are apart and keep them healthy and well. And be with Terry Perry also uh, with his marriage in June and also with his cancer returning. And all those that are on our prayer list and those that have not mentioned their needs but have needs, just be with them and love on them. And we love you and thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. And ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. Um, no, thank you. Thank you, Tammy, for praying for relief, and thank you for uh, your kind words, Mill. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I woke up this way. I've been waking up with a lot of head pain lately. I'm not sure why. Uh, could be just my sinuses. I'm not sure. But today's a doozy. So, um, please, if you guys have prayers, please leave them in the uh, comments below. Um, Justin, I just saw you pop on. It's good to have you on here. Um, there are a lot of prayer needs, and if you have prayer needs but don't want to list the specifics, just say you need prayers. We'll be happy to pray for you. Um, Zach 
uh, from the American Homestead could surely use your prayers. Uh, Jamie Lynn passed on Thanksgiving. Uh, she was fighting cancer for a while, and I hadn't jumped over there in a, in a couple weeks. And uh, she had a tumor form in the back of her tongue uh, while she was going through all the rest of these treatments to heal the uh, tumors that had been removed. And she had additional ones forming in her neck. And uh, she, she fought a hard fight. Um, they have amazing materials there too. She was a true inspiration uh, to God's love and to God's grace. And she was, you know, she, she had a very good perspective on uh, her, her days heading toward uh, leaving this earth. So just pray for them though. You know, even when we have a walk with Jesus and we are very close, it doesn't make the loss of somebody that close to you um, easy. So just lift them in prayer. And again, if you know people in need or you need prayer, please don't hesitate to ask for prayer. Um, you can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. And you can also private message me. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you gained something from this. I'm sorry I was out of sorts. Um, and, and dealing with this headache, but I didn't want to miss my opportunity to commune with you guys. I love this. I love our ministry. You guys empower me too, and I hope that I return the favor, and like I said, I give God all the glory. So have a fabulous day. I love you all, and God bless.